So good afternoon. Um, and I'm very pleased to be here. For so long we couldn't we couldn't move really anywhere. So it's just great. I feel this great sense of liberation to be back in uh, Ireland's second city. <laughs> so the EU for Corrige Augusta Falcher row of Galer more in you. As I say, I very much welcome this opportunity to speak to you here in Belfast today. The former British Prime Minister Harold Wilson once famously said that a week is a long time in politics. And if ever that was evident, uh, it's here in the North over the past seven days. Indeed, it was Wilson who held power as the old Northern state and the Unionist regime at Stormont imploded in the late 1960s, unable to cope with basic demands for equality and rights. And in many ways, it is still that failure to accept rights and equality which has been at the root of the political storm within unionism that we've witnessed over the course of recent days. The outworking of Brexit and the decision of the DUP to support it, the inevitable disaster of the post-election pact with the English Tories, the loss of the unionist majority in Stormont, have created a political landscape which many within the leadership of the DUP seem incapable of reconciling themselves to. You see, Ireland has changed, and the North is a fast-changing society, and the political institutions have to catch up with this reality. The balance of power has shifted irreversibly, and that's now reflected around the executive table and in the makeup of the assembly. So seeking to recreate political conditions which have gone and gone forever is the roadmap to exactly the sort of political cul-de-sac which we witnessed in the course of the past seven days. I take no comfort from the events of the past week. We want to see functioning political institutions. Institutions whose success is not measured in the ability simply to stay afloat, but measured in the impact that they have on citizens' lives. And in a, an executive and an assembly that guarantees and promotes rights with equality and respect at their core, that develops our economy, drives opportunity, and protects workers' rights. Sinn Féin will never stand idly by while rights are denied to women, to our LGBTQ community, to Gwail Gori, or to anybody else. And I'm very glad to say that Akhna Gaelga and the wider cultural package is now concluded and that legislation will come forward at Westminster in October, followed by the appointment of language commissioners. But 15 years, 15 years is far too long to wait for such basic rights to be recognised. Time lan sasta a ogerch gwil akhna gaelga agus an bar changa kultur reitha nish agus gudjoki an raktiyat os kor Westminster in year four. Rauno for the commissionary in a year. Yesterday, I spoke for the first time with the new DUP leader, Geoffrey Donaldson, and we have agreed to meet next week. And the question facing him is this, whether he is up for real partnership, real power sharing, for political institutions that deliver. If the answer to those questions is yes, then he will find a willing partner in the Sinn Féin team led by Michelle O'Neill. A partner who wants to get on with the task of delivering better public services, tackling the hospital waiting lists, building decent homes and managing the economy out of COVID. A partner that will continue to give a voice to those who have none who will work across party lines both in the Assembly and the Executive in achieving rights for women, for Irish language speakers, for newcomer communities and every section of our people who live here. A ministerial team with Michelle alongside Conor Murphy, Deirdre Hargi and Declan Carney working in the Executive to meet the real challenges facing us as we move out of this pandemic. 
But being part of this real partnership government is making and then sticking to agreements. All of the parties and two governments signed on for new decade, new approach. So its implementation is not a point of negotiation, it's an obligation on all of us. The failure of the DUP to meet this basic political benchmark and to actively obstruct basic rights is not the basis upon which effective partnership government can be built. And I believe that this approach by the DUP is way out of sync with wider society, including very many within the unionist community. There are many people within the broader unionist community I know who value the LGBTQ community, who value and embrace diversity, and who see no threat whatsoever from Irish language rights. They, like us, want to live in peace, to raise their family in a community based on decency and respect. They have no truck with sectarianism or triumphalism. They don't see their politics in terms of victory or defeat, and they are confident in their own identity, and rightly so. And likewise with Brexit and the approach taken to the protocol, the DUP are evidently not in step with broad public opinion, including so many within wider unionism. Brexit and the Brexiteers sought to isolate the North from the rest of Europe against the democratic wishes of the majority of people here. And the DUP, may I say, will be making another very grave political error if they seek to endanger the political stability of the institutions over the consequences and the outworkings of their Brexit policy. Neil Bonu Sleshan Protocol Escrosa, Isha Dahol Agus Usod Awinch As Uncousant Rincha, Namona Nad Luduhlan Agus Jakrati Aretokt, Is Fajer Chakt Aretok Agus Beam Saler Unso. Ta on protocol e tasto diaska nak erwaha le heren no on tuiskart e Brexit. Talk of abolishing the protocol are not grounded in reality. Good faith, engagement and use of the joint committee is the only mechanism to address challenges and difficulties. And solutions can be found. We see evidence of that today, but let me be clear. We need the protocol because Brexit is bad news for Ireland and bad news for the North in particular. So the DUP need to work alongside the rest of us to meet the challenges and maximise the opportunities of the Irish protocol. Business wants the protocol to work. They expect political leaders to work together to deliver solutions to the practical challenges that they face. So now change is in the air, and many now assess the type of future that is possible. Can it be better than the past? Can it be better than the status quo? Well, of course it can. The pace of this discourse is accelerating both inside and outside political systems in London, in Belfast, and in Dublin. I firmly believe that within this decade, the people will have the opportunity to freely choose new constitutional and political arrangements on this island as underpinned by the provisions of the Good Friday Agreement. And everyone who has a stake in this transformation from across this island must be involved in designing the shape that takes. So far from diluting unionist tradition or British identity and culture in any future arrangements, these rights, like others, must and will be guaranteed. Last week, Tánishtha and leader of Fine Gael, Leo Varadkar, made a very welcome political intervention, saying that the time to start for plan planning for Irish unity is now. I very much hope that he and the government of which he is part is as good as his word and will begin this process now. And let me be clear. There is no contradiction in working within a functioning, power-sharing government while building for a new, united, shared Ireland. 
while the different parties in the executive at this time may hold different and legitimate visions for the future. Power sharing, the primacy of a democratic, respectful and tolerant society must be the order of the day as we forge together a path in common cause, demonstrating a unity of purpose for all our people. Throughout the COVID pa pandemic, this has been the overriding approach of the five parties within the executive, and I believe that they've done a good job. In the days ahead, it's critical that political stability be restored. That is the least that people expect. Sinn Féin stands ready now to renominate Michelle O'Neill as Deputy First Minister. We will play our part. We don't seek to humiliate or to profit from the dysfunction within the DUP. But we will stand firm on basic rights and entitlements. These are not up for discussion and they are not up for negotiation. We are well past that time. Because now is the time for implementation. Now is the time for respect and equality. Now is the time for genuine and real partnership. Grimahigwev Galer.